Welcome back. This is our Algebra 2 Exponential Functions Lesson 1, Integer Exponents Homework Review Part 2. Please make sure to catch Part 1 for questions 1, 2, th one, two and 3 from the homework. Here we're doing question number 4. And uh, please reminder, just a reminder that if you find this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications to know when new videos are added to our channel. So, it says use the product property of exponents to simplify each exponential expression. You do not need to find a, fi a final numerical answer. Well, the idea now is that the product property of exponents is a lot like what I call the, um, the power rule. When we have a number raised to a power and we raise that whole thing to another power, we are going to keep the base the same and multiply exponents. And so, since we have 2 to the 3rd raised to the 4th, well, we're going to have 2, the same base, 2, and we're going to multiply the exponents 3 times 4. And we get 2 to the 12th power. And it said not to, you know, find the numerical answer, so we'll leave it in exponent form. For b, b, we see here 3 to negative 2, raised to the second power, so that would be the base is still the same, 3 to negative 2 times 2. And neg 2 times 2 is 3 to the negative 4. Now, we also express as a positive exponent. So, if you, want, you know, sometimes we'll be asked to, to put your answer to a positive exponent, so 3 to negative 4 will then become 1 over 3 to the positive 4. Now, which answer is correct? Well, <clears throat> if you don't have to express it as a positive exponent, then three negative four should be fine. But if you have to, just and you know it's possible, therefore you want to write as a fraction one over three to the fourth power. And finally, for part C, for question four, we have five to the negative five to the second power raised to the negative four, and that raised to the negative two. Uh, so we'll do this sort of an order operations type thing. We'll take five to five to the second power, and raise to negative four, which means you have five squared, five second power times negative four. So five times five to the two times negative four, and that gives us five to the negative eight. But we're going to raise this to the negative second power, which means we're going to get five to the negative eight times negative two, which gives us. 5 to the positive 16 power. Okay? Because negative 8 times negative 2 is positive 16. All right? Remember that the negative exponent does not necessarily make the, the number a negative number. Most of the time it doesn't. It just means we're going to be uh, putting that whole base over, on, under, the, on, uh, as a denominator, um, one over that number with a positive exponent. So we do that way. Or consider a negative exponent just having the number cross the fraction bar and becoming a positive exponent. Question number five. The exponential expression one over eight to the fourth power is equivalent to which of the following? And explain your choice. Okay, so we probably want to rewrite 1 over 8 as a, probably as a, um, as a, uh, a number with a, it's more like exponential form, okay, because these are all our choices are in exponential form. Uh, and I do see in this case we have a base 8, but we also have base 2 and base 4 and base 32. So one of the things that I recommend, well, first off, uh, is to change 8 itself change 8 itself, 8 itself is equal to 2 to the third power because you know, 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. So 1 over 8 is 1 over 2 to the third or 2 to negative 3. I know it's a little weird because a lot of times we're changing a number with a negative exponent to a positive exponent, but we also can rewrite it in this form too. And that would mean, in this case, that we can get our expression 1 over 8 as 2 to negative 3. And that itself is raised to the 4th power. And we use our, uh, 
I guess the product ex the exponent product rule or really power rule, we multiply two numbers. Uh, basically, we raise the power to the power, we keep the base the same, and we multiply the two exponents. So two times negative three, two raised to negative three uh, times uh, four. So in this case, two to the well, negative three times four is negative twelve. So we have two to the negative twelve. And that is the choice we see for choice B. And now, one of the things that I like to do is I always like to, to convert my numbers into the smallest base possible. And then from there, I can make adjustments. Okay, so 8 itself really, honestly, I can't really change it into any other number besides base 8, you know, it, you know besides 2. So I, that's why I went with that as well. Number 6. How can you use the fact that 25 squared equals 625 to show that 5 to negative 4 is 1 over 625? Well, the idea is 25 itself is related to 5 in the manner of the following. So we have 25 squared. Well, 25 squared is the same thing as, well, 5 squared squared because 25 equals 5 squared. These two values are the same exact thing. Again, we're going to convert them into a smaller base. Now, how is this helpful? Well, 5 to, five to the second power squared ends up becoming 5 to the power of 2 times 2, or 5 to the fourth. And we, again, still the same thing equals to, to, to uh, 25 squared, and so 5 to the fourth equals 625. So if 5 to the 4th equals 625, then 5 to the negative 4th will mean we have what equals 1 over 5 to the positive 4. Remember, a negative exponent is the same as 1 over that same number to the, po to the positive exponent. And since 5 to the 4th equals 625, 5 to the negative 4th becomes 1 over 625. And so this is the process we get this year. Okay, so we change the 25 into a smaller base with an exponent. We use the power rule where we're going to multiply exponents, and we get 5 to the 4th is equal to 25 squared, which is equal to 625. And then, of course, if 5 to the 4th equals 625, then 5 negative 4th is 1 over 5 to the 4th, which is equal to 1 over 625. Now, question number seven, we've extended the two fundamental exponent properties, negative as well as positive integers. What would happen if we extended the product exponent property to a fractional exponent like one half? Let's play around with the idea. So use the product property exponents to justify nine to the one half squared equals nine. Well, nine to the one half squared is the same as 9 to the 1 half times 2. And 9 to the 1 half times 9 to the 1 half times 2, really 1 half times 2 is 1, so that becomes 9 to the first power. Therefore, we see that we get 9 so that so that now the left side of 9 to the 1 half squared become again becomes 9 to the first first power is equal to 9. Now, what other number can you square that results in 9? Well, hmm, wait a minute. Not 1 squared, 1 squared 1, 2 squared 2, 3 squared equals 9. So what if we were to change 9 into 3 squared? So now we have this 9 to the 1 half, all right? And we change the 9 into 3 squared. So 3 squared to the 1 half, well, that would mean in this case that 3 squared to 1 half would just be 3 to the 2 times 1 half power or is equal to 3. So 9 to the 1 half is equal to 3. Well, that's interesting. Now, in this case, 
what other operation could we discuss that we can do the nine to change into three? If you were thinking in this case square roots, you were definitely on the right track. The square root of nine is equal to three. But wait a minute though. If nine to the one half is equal to three and the square root of nine is equal to three, then that would mean that nine to the one half power equals the square root of nine. And this is where we're going to explore on our next lesson, what a fractional exponent will mean. Okay, so let me put this full page so you guys can see everything here. So this will lead to our, our next lesson, lesson number two on fractional exponents. The idea that maybe our fractional exponents might have some to do with radicals. So ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for watching. This is the end of our homework review uh, for the exponential functions, lesson number one, integer exponents. This is our home review part two. And so thank you so much for watching. Hope it was helpful. Uh, I know a lot of you guys were like, oh yeah, I know this stuff, but just need to reinforce some ideas. And please make sure you work out every single problem because we're building on, on this idea of exponents for with, you know, from the ex, from the integer exponents. And then of course our next lesson will be uh, fractional exponents. And, and again, the idea of connecting uh, fractional exponents with radicals. So it's all interesting and hopefully helpful. And I know uh, the goal is so you guys really enjoy math more, which for some, it comes easy, others, not so much. But again, hopefully less mystifying in this case. Thanks so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys have a, you know, have a wonderful day. And please don't forget to give this video a like if you found it helpful, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications. We will definitely see you in the next video. Take care and be safe.